Welcome back to another episode of Plastic Weekly. And this time around, uh, this interview was prompted by a surprising performance on the World Cup circuit. So we'll just get right into it and talk to our guests. So first question is, what is your name? So uh, my name is Victor Bedrand. Uh, you can say Bedrand if you are an English speaker or if you uh, want to try a little something new, you can say uh, Baudran. You know, it's the French because uh, I'm actually, I'm French Canadian and uh, my last name is French. And so it's, it's typically pronounced in the French way, but Baudran uh, or Baudran both works. Cool. How old are you? Uh, I'm 18, but I was born in 2003. And so I guess I'm the oldest of my uh, category. I have one more year in junior before I age out. And so, yeah. When did you start climbing? Uh, I guess I joined I joined Team Momentum out in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, I think let's say 2012 or or 13, something like that. So I've been competing for maybe eight years or so. But my climb, my parents have always been passionate rock climbers, and so climbing and being out in the mountains has always been part of my life. But I- really. The How comp scene started maybe first year D, back when D was a, a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, how tall are you now? Uh, I'm 5'9", a little, yeah, 5'9". You still I, I have a little, no, nah, I think so. We'll, we'll, we'll cross our fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, man. But I have a really wide, um, long ape index. I think it's like plus five and a half or six or something. Five, like plus six inches? Yeah. Nice. Solid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm minus and two. Big so. hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Um, what, are, what do your parents do? Uh, so, yeah, my, my parents used to work uh, for, uh, in the mining industry. And so that meant that we, when I was younger, we would travel all around the world. So I've lived in places like Thailand and Africa. And um, now my mom uh, owns a business in Salt Lake City. And so we're based in Salt Lake City, Utah, but my dad still works internationally. And so he travels back and forth from Africa um, and the U.S. And so, yeah, it, it, it has permitted our family to see the whole world a little bit, you know, live in some cool places. Uh, but now it's nice to finally, like, stay in one place and live in Salt Lake where we can focus on rock climbing and school and all that stuff. So when people ask you where you're from, how do you answer and like why? I say I'm from Canada. My dad is French. Uh, and so I say, yeah, I have two passports. I have Canadian passport and French passport. And then I, I finish by saying I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. Huh. And then everybody's like, oh, okay. I don't explain too much because otherwise they just get lost. Like, Man, I was born here. I went over there. And <laughs> you uh, you recently finished high school, right? Yeah, I finished high school uh, a year early, which let me um, do this little like half year trip to France, uh, which I started in January. Um, and so yeah, with my French passport, I was able to go into the country without like I was you know, allowed with all the COVID stuff. And so it permitted me to like train in Paris and meet a bunch of the French climbers. And yeah, I think it was really good for my training. What, uh, just to finish up on the school thing, yeah. like you, you were in, uh, like, were you ever homeschooled as you guys were in different parts of the world or were you always like with other kids from always areas? with other kids for sure. What are, uh, what are your like best and worst memories of like your time in school then? Man, uh, I don't know. I, I always loved school. Um, I think the worst memory is probably just like I love school and I love the teachers, but I sometimes did not like the kids. And I, I just remember I I got in a few fights at school. And so I guess that's the worst memory, like classic sandpit, like ripping each other's hair out type of <laughs> scenario. I guess that's a bad memory. But uh, uh, good memories. uh I don't know, I guess just being surrounded by uh, a bunch of people that came from different cultures. Since like living in Africa, we went to international schools. And so you have kids with parents 
that you know shared similar backgrounds as us so like they would travel and and they would they would work in international you know uh jobs and stuff so you'd have uh children and kids from all over india you know all types of cultures and meeting that and being surrounded really helped me grow i think <laughs> you're uh, you're 18 now so i don't know if this is still a dicey question or not but do you have any tattoos uh, I have one little tattoo, yes. Yeah, what is it? It's It says stone. Like, okay. Like quality stone, you know? People look at it and like, stone, like, does that mean like stoned? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Stone, like the best quality stone. I didn't want to like write rock on my leg. And so right. instead it's, <laughs> it's stone, like like a piece of diamond, something so like rare and beautiful to like reflect a, like rock climbing, you know? When did you get that? Uh, I don't know. I just thought, like, I don't, I don't want to ask you any questions that your mom can't know the answer no, to. It's, so you can it's, dodge. it's funny, actually. Like, the, I got it before, um, I went to France in January, uh, with a few friends. And, um, when my mom picked me up, uh, I think when she met us, when she met me in France, she picked me up and I was wearing shorts or something. I sit in the car and she's like, what is that? So it didn't even last five minutes. Like she figured it out in like two seconds. Nice. What um, would uh, what would your next tattoo be? I don't think a next tattoo, unless. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't think I would have a next tattoo. Like the tattoo I have now is just a little funny thing. It's super small. It's a stick and poke, and it's yeah. Cool man. Yeah. All right. You uh you mentioned that like you've got uh, French citizenship because of yeah. your dad. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so you finish high school early and you decide mm -hmm. you want to go to Paris and like live that life and see what's up. And you mentioned in your blog that part of it was just like you get exposed to the French climbing culture, which yeah. whether you're talking about rock or competition, there's a yeah. lot of culture over there. So what what did you end up learning about climbing culture while you were uh, out in France? Well, I don't know. The the vibe in France is, is so different, like compared to the U.S., for example, when you when you go into a new gym, no matter if you don't know anybody or you've been there before, um, you just everybody is so psyched to to just talk and to, to climb with people and to be friendly. And so you're never even if you go in there planning on doing a session alone, you never end up doing a session alone. Like it doesn't matter if the person doesn't climb V five or not, like they're still encouraging you and like, allez, yeah, allez, take up, up, you know, it's just like a great atmosphere. And I feel like that's what's missing in the U.S. That's the, the French climbing culture. Like everybody is so stoked to be together and encouraging. And like, for example, you, you, you come into the gym. The first thing you do, you don't go do your warm up. The first thing you do is you go like knuckle and say hi to everybody. Like, even if it's, like, a group of 10, you go buff, 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 because it's just respectful, and then it really, like, sets the vibe for hmm. for the session that follows, compared to in the U.S., you know, you have, like, I mean, everybody does their own thing a little bit, I feel like, it's like, you'll walk in and do your own warm-up and stretch, and then put your headphones in, and that's it. Maybe you'll say hi once, but nothing, like, no encouragements feels like a little com competition maybe i don't know but that's the french climbing culture just always yeah hmm. be super energetic and psyched do you have any gym recommendations for anybody that visits paris uh paris i well now there's a few new gyms open there is climb up which is one of the biggest gyms the uh, in in paris i think in both boulder and lead which I didn't get to test. Uh, other than that, there's this um, classic gym called Arcos Nation, which you see the purple boulders, you know, flying by Instagram, Manu Carnu, uh, those are sick. And then there's also this really nice, um, I, I would call it a vibe gym. <laughs> okay. It's called uh, Climbing District. And it just a great atmosphere, you know, after, you, after your session, you drink one of their beers and, you're psyched and you have a little apéro if you want to and uh, that's a pretty cool gym too yeah so those three 
Does uh, does food play a different role in like French gyms as much as it? Oh yeah, see, yeah. For sure. Tell me, yeah, tell me a bit about that. Like all the gyms, you walk in and they either have a restaurant, they have like a boulangerie right there, or they have like their own beers, their own drinks. I feel like it, it's really part of the French climbing gym brand and culture. Like you have your session, sure, you train, but then after you, you relax and you have a good time. You're it's like a... less fitness than just like, you know. Yeah. Your uh, your Instagram page seems to feature, or at least for a period, featured like just as much baking as it did feature <laughs> rock for a little bit. Yeah. So I gotta ask, like, what's the most complex pastry that you uh, that you managed to like flash as a uh, as a flash. baker? Yeah. Oh, I honestly, man, I I've been I've been baked. Well, the thing I got into baking because uh, when I was training uh, next to Gl- in Glenub with the French national team. I had this friend um, named Mishmish, who also was on the French team, and he um, was a really pa- is a really passionate uh, pastry, sh- we'll call him a pastry chef. Um, he showed me all the techniques and stuff, and uh, I think we flashed uh, a Saint Honoré. I don't know if you know, but it's like a, it's like a flake, I don't know how to say it in English, it's like a, it's like a, a puff pastry kind of thing. It, or... Yeah, puff pastry at the bottom, and then you have like a bunch of cream puffs around, and then inside you have a pastry cream, and then whipped cream, and then it kind of just like makes this big, beautiful circular uh, uh, cake, and and that was a pretty impressive flash. It took us two days because we did it together, but it was a uh, yeah. That's most of the best days are. Are either like you go walk around, or you have fun in the kitchen. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> um, what do pistachios bring to the table that I All don't right. understand? <laughs> Man, pistachios are so good. I, like, think about pistachio ice cream. Pistachio that doesn't. Cream, that's not a vibe. So okay, that's one of my favorite so, flavors. Okay. And then I was like, man, pistachio and raspberry. That's gonna be a good cake. Hmm. That's gonna be a good cake. <laughs> Mm, nuts, roasted, roasted nuts, roasted pistachios, man, <laughs> you're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> I might give it a shot. All right, uh, we'll we'll start getting into like climbing questions, but yeah, but first, like the, the last question, like just personality wise, like on paper you kind of come across as a bit of an outsider, like you're Canadian but you're not in yeah. Canada, yeah, you're yeah. French but you're not in France, you're For not sure. American but you're in America. Um, do, do you like personality wise? Do you feel like an outsider? Actually, I, I don't. I don't know why. I feel like every time I like, meet people, I, I feel like I'm, I can easily just like have a conversation and like be proud about who I am and my identity as French-Canadian. Uh, and then since I've also competed on the U.S. circuit a little bit when I was younger, um, the youth circuit, uh, I feel like I have a connection with those kids too. And so I don't, I don't feel that that lost you could say um but i do identify as canadian um and more so french canadian now that i spent like seven eight months in france but i think it will always be canada for me and as you like i'm i'm moving to montreal so uh sorry to quebec city uh, to quebec uh in the next two weeks so it's going to be even more canada from now on It'll be nice to have you on the East Coast for a change, Yeah, I'm man. psyched. Yeah, yeah I'm psyched. <laughs> uh, okay, climate stuff. Who have you learned yeah. the most about climbing from? Well, probably my, my little brother. Honestly. Really? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Tell me about o- that. Oscar is just like, the, the man is so impressive. Like, he's young and he, he has like, he already moves so well on, on the rocks and on the boulders and like the way he he's able to think and like be super smart in his rock climbing um compared to his physical ability <laughs> it's pretty impressive and like like the other day we were bouldering and I, like i do this move and i had to try so hard i even like yelled a little bit like that and next thing you know oscar goes up and he does it and he does it but with like different beta that he figured out on the spot 
I don't know if you figured it out before and just wouldn't tell me. Anyway, he he made it super easy and I uh, just super impressed. I was like, wow, I I had to use so much power to do that move and you just hiked it. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> he's uh, what, two years younger than you? Born like yeah, 2005? He's, he's, he, 2005, he's 16. Right. And, and he'll be doing all the NA Cups with me. And so like, it'll be interesting to see. Like... After Briançon, there was a little uh, fun French competition, bouldering. Yeah. And he, and he beat me in it, like, just, like, just because I need to, like, wake up to, like, be able to be flowy and good on boulders. He's just always naturally moving well. He's just a good climber. So these, these like, two years where you're on the open circuit, but he's not yet, is that, like, your one chance to uh, to outperform him? And then when he shows up, you're just going to be in his oh, dust? Is that what no, you No, no, no. <laughs> no, I, th- I think he, he's on the open circuit now. But he's he hasn't competed anywhere. Oh, yeah, he was at some of those yeah, World yeah, Cups, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, that's sorry. Like... But, but, yeah, now it's going to be interesting because we'll be climbing against each other. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you think? Do you think he's somebody that can compete as uh, as strongly as uh, as you've shown so far? I think I think so. If he if he uh, we always say Oscar climbs like eighty percent of his ability every time. So like he's super consistent in like his ability, and it's uh, super impressive. So like he will rarely have a bad day, and he will rarely have a. I mean, he has a good days, but like he's. 80% to 100%. And so, like, whatever that is, whatever that ability for him is, uh, he'll climb that. And and so, yeah, if I have a bad day, I think I could for sure get booted by my little brother. <laughs> okay. Um, what about your style of climbing are you most proud of? Honestly, my, my ability to go low and slow, that's what we like to call it. Like, I can... I can fight like on routes. I can fight. I feel like for for quite some time, and, like put it into fourth gear, you know, or f- fourth or fifth. Man, I don't even know. The low one, right? A low gear. You're yeah. right. A low gear, not fourth gear. First gear and like rev it up to like eight thousand. <laughs> <laughs> like I had a moment in Briançon where, or even Chamonix too, in semifinal where I like went out to this hold went back and like tried to go back out and just being able to I didn't stick the hold but being able to do that is like yeah low and slow but also being able to stay relaxed and uh take my time and and not over grip the holds so there's a combo in that 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 concept came up um uh, Scott Ladley wrote a little profile on you uh, for the CEC's website, and oh, yeah. Pal- Palmer uh, Larson, your uh, coach, oh, yeah, yeah. coach and friend, mentioned that idea of a low gear. Yeah, um, yeah, that's really interesting. I like. I guess to summarize, it's like you can put like a million percent effort into really small actions. That was kind of the summary I took. Is am I understanding yeah, yeah. it right that way? Yeah, that's that's it. Huh. I would say that's interesting. Um, what's the what's the best way to make you motivated? Best way to make me motivated, huh? Uh, probably do like in the pep talk style, you'd be like, Victor, life is good, man. Just enjoy life. And then I'll be like, yeah, you're right. Let's enjoy <laughs> life. And then everybody's happy and I'm psyched and continue the training or like continue the, the like uncomfortableness of this boulder. I don't know. That'll get me psyched. All right. To continue trying. Um, when you flew to Paris in, in January, did you know that you were going to compete in World Cups during that trip? No, not at all. Not until like the like maybe I don't know March. I don't. Know, everything is just a blur. But I got like this message from my mom that was like, "Oh, uh, you can apply to do um, the World Cups this year uh, if you'd like." And I was like, "Yeah." I mean, I'm in France, might as well uh, take this opportunity. But no, the, the plan in France was to do the youth and open just national French competitions. Um, and they all got canceled because of COVID. And so I wasn't able to compete in them. And so I just ended up just continued training and, and climbing and meeting people around France. 
Uh, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't have the opportunity to do as many competitions, especially in the bouldering that I wanted. And so, yeah. So I trained bouldering for like six, eight, nine months. Hmm. Like comp style stuff and like really focused on getting better in the, on the flows side of uh, bouldering and and then just nothing. But that's all right. I have a NA cup soon. Hopefully I can use some of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully. Um, so before you started your, your season, your trip, where you hit the four uh, Alpine uh, World Cups um, starting in, uh, what was it, for, like Innsbruck, I guess. Innsbruck, yeah. Um, like, what did you think was the most likely outcome for yourself going into going? Like, again, you said you went to France to compete in like youth bouldering yeah. cups, and instead you end up at, you know, open lead World Cups for the most part. Yeah, so, yeah. what did you really think was going to happen? Uh, in, in the lead World Cups, I, I mean, I did not expect, I didn't expect, I wanted to make like one semis. That was my goal, one semifinal. And I think when that happened, um, in Innsbruck on the first competition of the season it really like put into perspective oh even if I got five plus in semis I think I, I can play with these big dogs <laughs> and uh, <laughs> make make another semis and then after maybe the semis make a finals I don't know um, but yeah I didn't I knew that after Innsbruck I, I could make another semi um but I didn't think I could really go for than that, and uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't uh, set boundaries or expectations for myself really, which made the journey really fun, because it was like lower pressure and also uh, I was able to enjoy every moment of it without having to worry about like anybody else but just me and my climb, and so yeah. Do you think if you were to go to, uh, like, I th my understanding is you're not going to do any more uh, World Cups this season. No. Right? Okay, so no. if, if you were going to, do you think the pressure would be different? Uh, honestly, I don't think so. There's something, there's, every everybody's there to just try their best. And it's, even if it's a competition, I feel like there's so many athletes that just, I don't know, they're, I don't know if it's the relationship I have with the specific open lead competitions or the relationship I've created with the lead competitions, um, but I have I did not feel that much pressure this season compared to like a youth competition, which should be less pressure. But I just like put it on myself. Why is that? I don't what? know. I think it's maybe like when you build habits, it mental habits. Um, they carry on, right? And it's, it, you have to build good habits. And so I, like, built a good habit at the beginning of the season of, like, really taking a chill and having a fun time and smiling. And so I just continued on through the, the next uh, Alpine Lead World Cup competitions. So maybe I need to rebuild some habits <laughs> for the Youth World Cups cause those, or the Youth Competitions because those stress me out sometimes. <laughs> Is it like, know. but what's the, what is it that adds stress to the, to the youth events? Is it just that like, as a, as a young kid, you were putting stress on yourself yeah, and you're saying exactly. that carries over? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh. So I gotta, I gotta switch those habits up. It's, it's hard to switch habits, but I think I can do it. <laughs> cool, man. Um, kind of in the same vein, do you think differently about yourself now that you're, uh, an open world cup finalist? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Not necessarily because it's an Open World Cup finalist. It's more because I, I got to climb on Open World Cup route, you know, um, which makes me a finalist. But it's more like my experience with the rock climbing rather than my experience competing against these people. Sure, it, it's motivating and it helps the confidence and everything, but... Yeah, more the experience of, like, yeah, I, I've i climbed on a route that, uh, you know, shut down a bunch of climbers. I've climbed on a route that was, like, this difficulty in a competition with the pressure, with the lights. It's more, it's more like that, you know. What about for people like me? Like, you know, I, um, like, I watch all the comps. I like talking yeah. about comps. I don't even like care about climbing that much anymore. Like I'm kind of like past that, but I love watching the competitions. 
Uh, and so, you know, obviously at an event like, um, like Chamonix, a bunch of us were just like so happy for you and so excited to see like a, a new Canadian uh, in a finals, which is like, it, it is a historic thing, whether or not it's a one-off or the start of something, yeah. you know, bigger or whatever. How do you want people like me um, to think about you and the performances that you had in um, Chamonix and Brienne Son? Yeah, uh, I mean, I I think it's like that for everybody. Um, I think that next season, I would like people to think that, ah, Victor, he had a decent season um, last year. Let's see if he can have another good season. But if I don't have a good season, it's not like it was a one-time thing. That's not how I want people to see it um, because, you know, you change, your mental space changes, maybe you get stronger and you get worse at rock climbing. <laughs> and so then you have a hard time, like, I don't know, doing moves at the bottom of a route or everything changes. For example, Domen, poor Domen. Like, I mean, homeboy has been training hard and I don't think he made one final this this season. And like, you can't be saying, man, this guy's done because... Maybe he's not, and he, he'll train harder or, like, fix the stuff that is missing in his climbing so that next year he can come back stronger and, and make a final and maybe win or something, like the good old days. But, yeah, like, it, expect, yeah, not having too many expectations for me, I feel like, is, but also, also being encouraging, you know. <laughs> I'm psyched, <laughs> so you should be too, so, but, yeah. Cool, man. Anything changes. Um, I just had a question in my head and it, uh, it popped back out. Let me see if I can find it in the next couple seconds. Otherwise I'll, uh, sure. I'll go to the other one I had. Um, well, yeah, anyway, the, the next question was going to be, uh, so right now it is, uh, mid August and, uh, the school year in Canada is about to start back up. So mm -hmm. what are, what are your, uh, what's like the order of your priorities in life right now? Um, for like the next chunk of time, however you want to measure that. Yeah. Well, uh, next chunk of time. So I think for sure school and, and training, um, I have planned to do all the NA Cups this season, both in uh, Canada and in the U.S. And so like keeping up that, that like performance phase in my training where I'm not getting too distorted in all the training I'm doing, so, like, floating above, like, not, like, going too hard uh, at climbing so that I can stay, like, nice and fit and not too uh, tired for the competitions. That's the plan. Uh, other than that, um, I'm going to start to work with uh, Patrick Labelle uh, personally, and so he'll help me out, and I'm psyched for that. He helped me out with some trainings and, uh, yeah, and it'll be a coach that's uh, near to me here in Quebec, not not too far away, just a one hour and a half drive, you know, <laughs> compared yeah, I was to gonna, I was gonna say where you're the world. where you're going to school is like it's not bit. it's not ideal for yeah. for easily getting to gym. So like, is yeah. where is uh, where is Patrick working out of right now? Uh, he's working out of the Cooks. Okay, the yeah. Cooks. That's in like the north side of Montreal, isn't it? Am yeah. I wrong? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you got, I thought it was yeah. like Laval or something, but I. I, I think yeah. No, there is one in Laval. Okay. There's one in Laval. All right. Anyway, yeah. Me and him are gonna. He'll make me uh, training plans and stuff, and so I'm excited to work with somebody that's gonna be in Canada, um, a little bit more personalized, and so yeah, I guess school and then training is the life that's gonna. Be actually transition i forgot to add the part where i'm gonna have to move all my stuff from salt lake yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> uh just to tie that up like is is some of your family staying back in salt lake like your mom oscar they're, yeah they're staying sure. out there it's just yeah. you out here in quebec for now it's yeah it's just going to be me uh actually natalia took my spot in the house and nice. getting kicked out <laughs> yeah that's funny 
Cool, man. Well, I think that's like yeah. probably probably a good spot to leave it, just knowing kind of what the next little bit of the future is for you. And maybe yeah. maybe I'll run into you at one of the NA Cups, depending oh, yeah, on for sure. if they like uh, if the if the one in Canada happens or not. We'll see. Yeah, how, yeah. Like how how Ontario and like COVID uh, plays out. Yeah. But yeah, I'll end it there. Um, Sweet. Thanks for taking a little bit of time, and congratulations on just like a, a banger season. It was really fun thank to watch you, you man. And, it was. Uh, it- it was awesome to have that opportunity. And thank you, everybody, for the support, man. <laughs> we, were, we were happy to support you, man. It was, it was really <laughs> exciting. It was for that little bit where, like, there was still a possibility where you where you could have got a podium as well. It was like yeah, just yeah. our brains were falling apart. We were like, this, oh, nobody nobody expected this. That was such a wild route in, uh, in Dude, Germany. Dude, it was a nuts. wild route. Sean Valley gets off. He's like, dude. That thing was nine C. Like, <laughs> chill, man. It wasn't. I mean, it was hard, but yeah. like I did some of the moves. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can set the bar higher on what you can climb outside, right? There you go. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Victor. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Thanks to everybody watching. As always, you can uh, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. Uh, support the podcast on Patreon. Jump in the Discord to watch comps together. So next time Victor's at a World Cup, we can be cheering him on or whoever else you like to cheer on. It's all good, whatever. Uh, but with that, we'll see you guys in the next one.